Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Golden Harvest Community Church today on this beautiful, brisk morning. It's lovely, isn't it? We'll start in prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We honour you. And we are so grateful that you chose us to be in your kingdom. We ask that you open our eyes and our ears in the spirit to get revelation on today's message and holy boldness to take us out into the community and to share your love and your light into our community and help to bring those that are lost and that are, are, are needing salvation in their lives. We love you, we honour you, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, today's topic is seeing God. And it's a pretty broad word, seeing. And I'll go through the, um, the meaning of seeing out of the study Bibles and the reference Bibles that we, uh, references that we use. But the reason I, I've got today's topic is because I've noticed on social media and, and um, when people are in a crisis and they do know the Lord, or even if they don't, they're crying out and going, are you even there? Do you even care about me? I can't see you. I can't feel you. So it really tugged on my heart this week that it was a topic that was really needed and we needed to sort of get a bit of revelation on. So here we are. <laughs> so um, so the, the, the common thing out there in, in today's society is, and humans have um, made it this way, that we physically want to see something. We want it to be tangible. We want to be able to see it. But God's not a human being. He's a spirit. So to see him, um, it, it comes in all different ways, doesn't it? it it's, it's, uh, some people feel him. Some people do have a visual way of seeing him. And, and that way of seeing him, if you do have that visual capability, um, it could be as a person. You may have this sort of a reference. Some people see his feet or a bright light or... Some people, if you're a little kid, you might want to see him as a teddy bear, someone that you can climb up on his lap and, and get a hug from. And then some people might just see him as a massive big love heart. You don't know. Like everyone has a different way and a different version of seeing God. So we're going to have a look at this today. Um, science also has this big thing of wanting to prove that God is real. And the more they go out to prove that he's real, they find out that he is, which is a blessing for us, isn't it? <laughs> so let's look at today's first scripture. I'm sorry, so the meaning of, of, of see. And the word for, the Greek word for see um, is haraho. And it means I see, I look upon, I experience, perceive, discern, and beware. And then the HELPS um, study also says to see with the mind, i.e. spiritually see, so you're not actually physically seeing something, you're perceiving it with inward spiritual perception. You just have that knowing and that understanding that God is there and he is active in your life. So I really wanted, I really liked the way that it was experience, perceive and discern. Those words really meant a lot to me when I looked at this and it opens up how we see God because we all think that we have to physically have that image in front of us. Our first scripture, John 6, 46. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. And I'm just going to read it out of the Woos. So that's out of the New King James. But out of the Woos Bible, he's, they say it like this. Not that anyone has discerningly seen the Father, except he who is from the presence of God. 
this one has with discernment seen the Father. So when we talk about seeing God, we all know it's not a physical seeing. We're not seeing him in the fact that I can see you all sitting here today and you can see me. He's a spirit and he's in the spirit and it's more of a sense of knowing that he's there and like I said, it is a sense of, um, of that experience that you just know when you're going through something that he's going to bring you through it and that he's got his hand on it. He's, he's guiding you through in the most amazing and blessed way that you can even imagine. John 1.18, no one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So we have to see by faith, which is how Jesus was when he was here on earth, it was all through faith that he would go out and pray and do his healings that he did And that's the same as us. We need to be that light on a lampstand. We need to be able to go out there and help others to understand that God is in everything that they do in each and every day, more so if they allow him to be there, which is what we should all be doing. And I always like to think of this scripture, I always sort of say have this visual image of a little child nestling into the mother's arms and up against her chest being cuddled, they seem to melt into you, don't they, when they're, especially when they're really little kids and you grab them and you get that real endearing hug and it's just it's so nice. And this is how I see this scripture and it, to me it just makes it feel comforting and warm. Two Corinthians five seven, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So when we are going through situations, it's always our testimony that's going to help people, and it's through our faith that we we get to see God. We're not meant to, as Christians, we're not meant to be looking into things with our physical eyes. We look into it with our spiritual eyes and we see what God wants us to do and how, whether he wants us to be a part of whatever the situation is or whether we step back and go, you know, that's not ours today. We don't judge anybody And it's it's not our place. But we're supposed to be walking by spiritual. We're supposed to be listening for God's voice. So there's all different gifts, as we know. There's there's gifts of seeing, there's the gifts of hearing, gift of knowing, knowledge. The apostles, the, um, sorry, my words are going out of my mouth. (laughs) I need a drink of water. (laughs) Um, um, There's the prophets evangelists, teachers, all pastors, all the gifts that we are. There are so many gifts. There's a, the gift of being able to, the psalmist, this, being able to get up and play a mus- musical instrument. Me, don't even ask me to stand in front of a microphone and sing because you'll all run, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you do not want me to sing or play a musical instrument. Maybe the triangle. I said that to someone one day and they laughed at me. They said, you'd probably mess that up too. <laughs> probably. I think that's why they used to always put me at the back of the choir at school <laughs> so that I wasn't up front. And <laughs> so, yeah, we, we've got to walk in faith. Now, faith isn't something we can see. It's something that we just believe in and that we trust, that we know that it's, it is what it is. And we follow that. We know that God's got a hand in there and we know that he's a part of everything that we do, everything that we want. We do not receive because we don't ask or if we do ask, we ask amiss. If you haven't got all the blessings and the things in your life, we know that's why. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How do we hear? By reading our Bibles on a daily basis. 
I know over the last few weeks I haven't been myself, I haven't been well, and I honestly have to say by staying, reading the Bible while I was at home for two weeks, it helped me to get my way through. And I can honestly say I'm standing here feeling quite human today. <laughs> Praise God, because you know people that have had um, any illness know what it's like not to feel like they're, they're, they're themselves. And it, if you stay in that word and keep, keep reading the Bible, praying, having that relationship with the Lord, it helps us to get through anything that we need to. So that we need to be able to, to hear God's word and that's through his, through his Bible. So by faith, we're going to look at some of the examples in the Bible that um, of seeing. Now, Moses was one of the ones that he actually was blessed to be able to see God's back as he walked past. He wasn't allowed to see his face because otherwise he would be blinded. And, um, and in Hebrews 11.27 it says, By faith he, we're talking about Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So this refer, refers back to Exodus 33, 18-23. You can read that for yourselves. You don't need me to do it. We all have Bibles. <laughs> and Moses asks us to, for, to be shown his glory. But God says, no, 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 no. If you see my face, you see it all, you'll never see anything again. So he covers his, um, his face with, with his hand and he lets his hand go as he walks past and all he gets to see is his back. So, <clears throat> so, but that was a physical sense of seeing. This is, and this is the kind of thing that I find that most people want. They want to physically see God, but they're not going to because none of us want to end up blind. I've got a friend right now that's going through losing, I've got two actually, two elderly friends, that are actually losing their eyesight and it's the worst thing that is ever going on in their life. They, you know, can't find their way around their homes, they can't look after themselves anymore and it's putting them into um, aged care facilities. So there's also the, um, the scenario of the Samar Sam oh, I can't say it now, Samaria, wo Samarian woman <laughs> at the well where Jesus goes and talks to her and this is how I see that um, we get to see Jesus, God at work in everybody else's life. The Samarian woman is there at the well talking to Jesus and he's telling her all about what has happened in her life. And then as, as the... Um, the, the, my words have gone today, sorry. Um, as, as they come back and talk to him and, you know, want to give him food and everything, the Samaritan woman takes off and goes back into her town and she's giving her testimony. Come and see, come and see. I've just, I've just seen the Messiah. You know, come and see him. And it's in John 4, 28 through 29. The woman then left the water pot. So she's in that excited. She's left everything behind. She was up there to draw water to take it back home. She was so excited about what she had just experienced with Jesus that she's taken off. And isn't that what happens when we experience something that we, uh, we get through a tribula, um, tri trial and we just get so excited we want to share it with everybody and we just leave everything behind. But she leaves that water pot behind and she went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all things that I, have ever di that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Now this is a testimony. She's out there and she's sharing her testimony of what she has experienced. And this is how we get to see, this is how I believe we get to see God in, and his work at, ha at hand is through the testimonies of you and I sharing what we have done and what we have gotten through. Like people that, that you know, 
broken marriages and for whatever reason they end up getting back together and their their relationship is bigger and stronger. I've got a friend in um, another town, won't mention the town because then that doesn't put them in a compromising position. She was going off to a, um, a big meeting. She was on a board and had to go to Melbourne on a monthly basis, but she was going there with another gentleman who was also on the same board. They were from the same area, so they'd travel together, stay in separate motels. But her, father, her husband would stay home and he started getting all these voices in his head saying, oh, she's having an affair with him and all this sort of stuff. And she wasn't. She wasn't having an affair. So what did he do? Tit for tat, you're having an affair, I'm going to have an affair. And he went out and he had an affair and his wife hadn't, hadn't betrayed him at all. And then he finally confessed to her and she said, I haven't done anything. I literally was just travelling in a car to Melbourne to go to the, the meetings and come back to you. And he felt so bad, but she loved him so much that she was able to forgive him and they've gone on and it's many, many years since that's happened. But there's the hand of God for her to be able to forgive him and to be able to move on and have a really strong and blessed relationship and now they're grandparents and enjoying life. And just that in itself, God had to be in that. It is very hard to forgive people when they really betray you like that. But these are those voices that come in and, and we, we listen to them, unfortunately. And he did. Psalms 22, 22, Amplify Classic. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. This is all about giving your testimony and giving thanks and praise to the Lord for everything that he does for us. And going out there and sharing our testimony, wow, my testimony is abundant from birth all the way through. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have been here from birth. I was almost knocked off my, my life story right at the very beginning. And then I had specialists speak over my life and tell my parents as a baby that I was going to be in a padded cell in a straight jacket and I would never be good for anything. And here I stand in front of you right now. <laughs> and I... That, you know, my, I grew up all my life being told I'm a sick little girl, I can't do that. You, you know, you've got to be careful, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't until I was in my 40s that I finally took my power back and I told my parents enough. I do not want to be called a sick woman, sick little girl anymore. I'm done. I'm not sick. I am healing. I am strong. And I am. And now when I get sick, I don't go down, well I do, but not for long, because <laughs> I soon come back up out of it. But that's all God. God has shown me that I am worthy to be well and I am able to move forward and I don't have to accept these words that people are speaking over my life. That you don't have to accept it either. If you allow Jesus into your heart, then your life will change just like mine. I've had depression. I've beaten that without drugs, without a psychiatrist. It's all God. I've been in the occult world. I've gotten out of that. Hallelujah. And I knew that that wasn't right for me either, but I didn't. I was trying to get myself better. So the Lord led me through all these things that... Eventually, I started proclaiming, I'm not going to have another life. I used to believe in reincarnation. Man, when you think you've had 101 lives, I think it's enough. <laughs> no more. <laughs> you know, who wants to have 101 lives and come back and do it all over again? No. <laughs> Eternal life for me. Thank you, Lord. I'm putting my hand up for that one. <laughs> Oh dear. Acts 9, Saul sees us, um, sees a light shining down from heaven 
And then a voice say, it says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It says in verse 7, uh, Acts 9 verse 7, and the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Now, can you imagine the testimony of the men that were with Saul? Evelyn Saul's testimony from him being a persecutor of anyone that spoke in Jesus' name. And then we also have Ananias, who's been told by, Je by the Lord to go and help to give to, so that um, Saul can get his eyesight back because he's got his hand on, on Saul and, and he's going to make big things out of him, and he does. But can you imagine the kind of testimony that these people would be running around and saying, we heard this, there was no one there. It was like that earth tremor the other day, hey? <laughs> I literally thought it was running down the side of my house. <laughs> I could hear it and I could feel it shaking, but it never shook my house. It was really weird, but it did happen. Acts 9.10, to carry on with, with Saul's journey. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias and he said here I am Lord so Ananias didn't see Jesus physically either it's like a, it's like he's in a dream he's having a vision and you hear from from his direction or see it's like a movie screen that can come up some people get and I do at times get the privilege of getting a movie screen that's coming up. I do it when I'm massaging, it's, it's really random. All of a sudden I get shown something and, or my hands end up somewhere where I had no intentions of going. To me it has no relevance. If I put my head into it, there's no relevance why my hands are in that position on that body of that person. And then all of a sudden the person usually says to me, how did you end up there? <laughs> and I go, huh, what? Oh, I don't know. And I just keep, it obviously needs it. But sometimes I can be looking at the body and I can see something that is obviously not right. So your hands go there too. So, you know, the Lord has this way of giving me the vision of where I need to be on the body and to help those people. And this is what's happening with Ananias. He's getting this vision and he's hearing Jesus' voice and he gets his direction for what he's to do next. Now, Ananias knew all about Saul. He knew that he was a persecutor. He didn't want to go anywhere near. And I don't blame him, quite honestly. <laughs> no, I'd be sitting on my hands, not going anywhere if that was me. <laughs> I'm on Ananias' side. <laughs> but... Because he's obedient, he does exactly what Jesus tells him. And we're moving on to verse 18, which is immediately there fell from his eyes. So this is after Ananias has finally gotten hold of Saul. And from his eyes, something like scales. And he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptised. Verse 20, Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Now what a testimony. Now everyone knows, and hello, you got me standing up here, not Pastor Dean. <laughs> I'm standing up here giving you the message today. I can tell you this is not in my steam. There is no way, particularly in front of a camera, do I like standing up in front of people talking. I can talk a million times a day. You can ask all my clients. They all know I can yap all day. <laughs> but you put me in front of a camera and I'm, yeah, or in front of a crowd, nah. So there's no way I can do this. And this is what happens 
when you start to preach, you're preaching from your own testimony, you, you, from your own experiences and how God has had his hand on everything in your life. And, and all of a sudden, all that fear of cameras and people and <laughs> every, all the, the so-called judgments, and you learn that everybody that is out there doesn't have a right to judge you. The only judge is God. So if anyone's going to sit here and judge me and how, how can Sandy Corcoran be standing up there and giving a sermon, well, you know what? Bless you. <laughs> Have a lovely day because, you know what? I don't want to be up here either, I can tell you now. But I am and I'm doing it because this is what the Lord has asked me to do. And one day he may ask you to do it too. And are you going to do it? Because I tell you now, if you are doing it, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to be praising you and I'm going to be hugging you at the end because, man, it, it takes guts. And the only way I get my guts to do this is through him, his power, his might, his steam and his love. And I'm going to cry. Sorry. <laughs> So that's how we get to see that God's hand is in everything because it's when you can't do something of your own admission, you've got no way of knowing how to see it. And I can tell you, soul, wow, he's not an idol of mine, but I certainly respect the man. Big time respect him because he was like me, he was whoa, way out there. I don't want nothing to do with those Christians. Someone come and door knock on my door, no thank you, or wouldn't even open the door, wouldn't give them the time of day. Now they don't come and knock on my door. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> moving on, Romans 15, 18. Nine, uh, through 19, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make one Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jer Jerusalem and round about to, now here we go, to Illyricum, Sorry, I apologise, I get tongue-tied. The Lord's working on that. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So this is Paul, otherwise known as Saul, is saying he gives all his praise to Jesus for what he has done within him, the changes that have been made. His life has done a complete 360 and I have to say, so is mine. Oh, you can throw a coin up in the air and flip it and it can twist 20 f times before it hits the ground. Man, that's how many times the God's had to work on me to get me to where I am today. And Saul's the same. He's just, one of, oh, I'm, I'm in kinship with him. I'm, I'm on his side, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I often use Saul in my, um, my messages. And this is how we see God by his mighty works that he does in us and then by us going out and sharing our testimonies with people, that's when you get to see God at work. It's in those testimonies that we give and this is what this scripture is talking about. It's talking about the testimonies. We can't get up and preach if we haven't got life experience. There are some little kids out there that are absolutely truly amazing and full of God and can preach the word of God from their hearts and they are amazing. I've watched them on YouTube and they just tug at your heart and you go, oh, wish I was like that. But I'm me. And God doesn't make mistakes. And all miracles come from God. Every single one of them. And we're always looking for them, wanting to experience them. But you know what? Miracles can be this big and they can be this big. <laughs> okay? So 
just, there's just so many definitions of what a miracle is, but we're going to look at the meanings of those two. So, a sign, which was in the scripture, hang on, we'll just go back to the scripture here, in mighty signs and wonders. So, we're just going to look at the meaning of a sign. The Greek word is simeon, and it's a sign, a miracle, in, indication, I have to look at that, mark, or a token. And the HELPS word study says it's a sign typically miraculous, given especially to confirm, corroborate, or authenticate, emphasises the end purpose which exalts the one giving it. So signs are miracles. And this is what we're all looking for. We all have to have that, that proof, that thing that we can see. And a miracle, this is out of the dictionary, an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency. They come from God. So when you experience a miracle, you're experiencing God. You're seeing his hand in it. Wonders. The Greek word is terra, teros, terra, teras, 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 it sounds better. <laughs> I won't say the other way. <laughs> is a, another, again, a miraculous wonder done to elicit a re reaction from onlookers, an extraordinary event with its supernatural effect that left on all witnessing, left on all witnessing it. So it's those people that they're going, how did that happen? How did that person walk away from that car accident? My daughter was in a car accident uh, probably a couple of years ago now. She was going from Orange to Blaney and she come up over a hill and there was a kangaroo on the middle of the road and she swerved. And she had the good sense to just, she pulled her feet off the accelerator, she put her hands in the air and she just let the car do its thing. Now, she ended up backed into a whole um, line of shrubs. Thankfully, they weren't big trees. But she had literally torn the passenger side wheel completely off. Now, thankfully, there was a um, couple of young boys. They came along and they stopped for her and they took her to her friend's house. Jess didn't think anything of it. She lives in a flat, she had a flatmate at the time. She never thought to ring her flatmate and say, I've just had an accident, I'm okay, don't worry. The police found her car abandoned. They had searched the area for a body because they thought the person in the car had died. They got her registration at, um, up. They found out where she lived. They went to the house, they knocked on the door and they asked her flatmate, was she okay? Her flatmate freaked, had, didn't know anything about it and Jess's phone was blinking. It was about to turn off. The battery was about gone. She didn't have a charger because it was in the car. And she's, and she's saying to her flatmate, because her flatmate's rang her because the police are at the door, and she said, just tell them okay, I'm okay and I'll come and see them when I, I get back to town. Now, the police did not know how she walked away from that. I pray every day for my whole family's vehicles to be washed in the blood and for protection and travelling mercies. Every day. I do not leave my house without doing that. And she also had, this is the other thing, she also had a bookcase in the back. So she had a RAV, Toyota RAV 4, and she had a bookcase on the back. So she had the seats laid down, she had a bookcase on the back, and I pray for her windscreen to have the blood of Christ over it. And that bookcase went through the side window, not through the front window, which would have taken her out. Now, you tell me that is not a miracle because, wow, I've got photos of her car and I can show you what it looked like. And it, 
is one of the biggest miracles other than my dad. Praise God. I've got plenty of <laughs> testimonies and I'm sure you do too. But this is when you see God. This is how you know that he is there. He is not a physical person. 1 Peter 3.15 But in your hearts set Christ apart as holy and acknowledge him as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defence to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you do it courteously and respectfully. Let people see Christ in you. Be that lamp on the lamps on the, the lamp stand. That's the word. <laughs> you know, be be the light on the the city on the hill. You know, isn't it lovely driving around like when you drive home from Wagga and it's dark and you get to see the lights of GE over there. And then you, you, know, you can see the lights when you're coming into tomorrow. Whichever way you go, if you go to Coolerman, you can see the lights. It's really nice, isn't it, to be able to see. And I know as a little kid, we used to look for different things on our trip to break up our trip. And you do that. It's, it's a great way to, to look and light always overcomes darkness. You can always see light through the darkness. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. But we need more people out in our community and particularly in West Wylong. There's more lost people. I talk to teachers on a weekly basis in my job. and They don't give names, but they are devastated. Their hearts are crushed which, what, with what's going on with the kids in our town. It's heartbreaking. And we as Christians need to get our light turned on and be a light for those kids, for those teachers and support them, for the parents. How can a parent instill self-respect and love in their ch children if they don't have it in themselves? Because I can tell you now, I'd never had it when I was a kid. I got bullied. And we as Christians need to step up and help those, those people in our community, all of them. Don't drive past a car accident and go, oh, somebody else can get that. Not my job. Don't walk past someone having a fisty cuff out the front of the pub on a Saturday night. If you're up the street, me, I'm always at home, tucked in, nice and warm, <laughs> not going out. But if you're one of those people that are out, you know, if you see someone stealing something that's not theirs, call them out. But instead we all want to, oh, I don't want to know nothing about that. But that's not what God's people are supposed to do. Let God be seen within you. People want what you've got when you choose to step up and be that light and show that God is in everything that we do. So just to recap, because we're coming to a close, our first scripture, not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God he has seen the Father. Look for those signs and wonders in your life and in everybody else's stories. When you hear people tell a story, you're seeing God. You know, people that have walked away from those car accidents, my dad, he walked away without any paralysis from a massive stroke. Yes, he's had to have operations since on his heart, but I'm praying that Jesus has taken over the doctor's hands and making sure he's getting the best of the best, I can tell you right now. <laughs> and he is, he's good. But he also now knows his capabilities. He knows 
He was going to come to West Wallong a few weeks ago and it was raining torrentially in um, Canberra. And he rang me and apologised and said, I don't, I don't think we should come today. I don't, it's raining. I don't feel comfortable. And I went, praise God. Because once upon a time, he would have just gone in the car and come. But now he knows his limitations. You know, I've walked through the stroke unit in Canberra with people that have had less problems than dad and have come out worse. But my dad's being prayed for every day and not just by me. I know that I've got intercessors out there that are praying for my family just as much as I am. So start look, stop wanting to see the physical being of God because he's not a being, he's a spirit and he is there and he does love you and he will get you through everything that you are going through if you allow him. Just ask him. It says. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. But you have free will. And until you ask, he's not going to give it to you. And also in Matthew twenty-two fourteen, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Don't you want to be one of those that are chosen? You know, Bell's come in today going, I love Sundays. Love being here. <laughs> so do we. We love being with like-minded people that love the Lord, that we can share our experiences, share our light with and not be judged and criticised. Because God had his, has his hand on each and every one of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bring it on. So if you are one of those people today that um, hasn't had the privilege of coming to the Lord, I'm going to ask you to share with, to say with me this prayer. And I want you to try and put this prayer into your own words or you can just follow me if you don't know what to do. If you're anything like me, I had no idea what I was doing when I came to the Lord and it took me a long time to realise what I'd done because I just did it because I knew I had to. <laughs> so say this after me. Dear God, today I confess I am a sinner. I am sorry and I know Jesus died on the cross for me. Take my sin. He took my sins to hell to raise up again and is now in heaven. Jesus, please come into my life and be my Lord and Saviour. Holy Spirit, come into my heart and direct my steps. Guide me, teach me and rebuke me for the rest of my days. Amen and amen and amen. So if you have just prayed that prayer for the first time, I encourage you to go out and find yourself the church that you fit in. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. You will know where you fit, where you're comfortable. It's, nothing is one size fits all, sorry. <laughs> but you need to go out and experience. We would love to have you here if that's where you would like to be, but you need to go and see which church is yours. I have tried many a churches and when I came to the Lord, the, my pastor, Pastor Paul, who led me to the Lord, <laughs> tried to palm me off to another church in town and I went, nah, -uh. you're it. He was in retirement, well, he thought he was. I brought him out of retirement. Dragged him out, said, nope, nope, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and that church is now closed in West Wallam. So 
I am very grateful that Pastor Paul was able to come out of retirement and he was now led, I mean, he leads lots and lots of people to the Lord because he's amazing, but he's a very godly man and he loves Jesus so much and he's a great example and I am very blessed to be a part of his church and his ministry. So go out, find your church, come and see us, but don't sit at home because you need to be with fellowship and it's not all about coming to church you can you can love Jesus at home but sometimes you just get that extra oomph that you need by being in a room with with us or whoever so we thank you Lord we thank you for showing us who you are today and and showing us that you're not a physical being, that you are a spirit and that you have a hand in each and every one of our lives and you want us in the light, in your love and under your protection. We love you and we honour you and we thank you for your holy, holy boldness as we go out and help those in our community today, tomorrow and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget, Pastor Dean is on the radio tonight at 7 p.m. on 94.5, 94.5 Gold, West Wylam. Or there's also Dubbo, Orange and Bathurst at 10 o'clock tonight. You can stream it so you don't have to be in West Wylam. Um, yeah, there's apps that you can download and see it, but it will come up as Wagga, not West Wollong, but it is the right one. So check that out. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube. Um, that's about it. Have a great week. We love you. And we're very grateful that you were watching. Have a great week.